Hi, everyone. I'm really honored to be back here again. Uh, Kilter has been fantastic for my growth as well and my learning as well. Um, I don't ever think that we stop learning, and, uh, but it's, it's very, very important to learn from the right teachers. And who, it's very important to have critical thinking as well. Yogita and I actually met because uh, both of us were clones for Daily Dump, which yeah. is a composting company and which keeps tons and tons of um, organic or wet waste off the streets of Bangalore right now. And we actually propagated it in our own cities when I was in Hyderabad and Yogita was in Goa. Um, she's still in Goa. So let's get started. Um, the reason why I thought of this talk is because of this. This is Brian, he's my operations manager and um, his wife is pregnant. She's due in October, actually. And um, we were discussing nutritional supplements for his wife, Apeksha. And he said, yeah, I'm buying this women's special Horlicks. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting. Why are you buying it? And you know, when you're already getting ragi malts from the farm, and he's like, yeah, because, you know, it has the necessary vitamins and minerals and the person at the hospital recommended it. I'm like, okay, let's, let's take a look at the label. And he, um, he, took at the, he took a look at the label and what we found was, um, I do have a jar of it right here. I actually got it from him specifically. So this is Brian and a big shell jar of Horlicks over here. And the first... Um, ingredient is cereal extract, 47%, which means there's barley flour, not even barley malt. Barley flour, wheat flour, malted barley, which is about 8%, and malted wheat, which is about 1%. So when he took a look at this, he was just like, and, and then, you know, uh, there's 36% milk solids, and then there's hydrolyzed corn solids, um, mineral salts, and vitamins. So essentially, it's Atta and a vitamin tablet, um, if you want to like simplify it further. And when we broke down the costs, because we're a food manufacturing company, we do understand that there are associated costs with manufacturing food, which is why the industry standard is that your basic input cost, which is just your raw materials or your raw ingredients, should be approximately between 30 to 40 percent of the total cost which is your mrp so if you're selling something for about 100 rupees just the raw material or the raw ingredients without the labor without the processing cost about 30 rupees or so the labor the rent the machines the utilities all of them and then your profit margin all of them make up the rest of the seven percent this is his face when we calculated the price and um, and we calculated the price on the retail prices that are available in the market online. We just went to Amazon and we checked out everything. And uh, this was just, um, and then he looked at me and he's like, you know what, the ragi malt and the jawar malt and the barley malt that she gets from her farms back home is just so much better than this. Uh, and there's no sugar in it. So yeah, let's get started. This is the anatomy of a food package. Now a food package has two um, basic parts to it. One is called the PDP, which is the principal display panel. And one is called the IP or information panel. Now the information panel comprises of the nutrition fact, which is your nutrition table, as well as the ingredients. And then you have your regulatory information, which is where it's manufactured, what is the batch size, or batch number and you know the FSSAI or whatever licensing it needs to requ it requires and whatever um, GMP code it needs, which is good manufacturing practices code. The PDP, on the other hand, is a free for all. It's not really well regulated um, in India, or at least across the world globally, you have some amount of leeway because it's considered as creative. And um, you, can, you can basically just display anything that you want on it, uh, which allows, but that's, that, that has the majority of the real estate. If you can see the box over here, um, the majority of the real estate is given to advertising and claims that can be explained away with a little asterisk or a little hashtag or a little arrow. I've, I've just, I've encountered so many little superscripts of, of a variety of symbols and numbers, it's mind boggling. 
um, if you have your hands on um, a milk supplement like a Horlicks bottle, bring it over and just take a look at it. Take a look at the fine print while I'm talking to you here. These are the symbols that I um, came across. I was unfortunately unable to copy paste superscript numbers because it's a Mac and for some reason it didn't uh, translate well on Canva. But you have these little arrows and asterisks and little dagger signs and double dagger and hashtag. Just take a look at all of them. Um, on the women's Horlicks, I can count approximately eight um, little superscripts. So you also have to go, sorry about that. You also have to go and find the information which is used to um, back up that claim, but also used to sort of creatively um, display that claim on the principal display panel. Here we go. So these are your claims over here. Taller, more bone area, more stronger muscle, better concentration. And this is for the children's Horlicks. I do have a box over here, so I will refer to it over here because I couldn't get all of the information. And there's just a lot. There's a lot of it over here. Um, and uh, a lot of claims over here as well. So uh, let's take a look. Here we go. So children ha having Horlicks every day were taller, stronger, plus mark, and sharper compared to those who did not. And this is everyday consumption of Horlicks. Now, these are the claims. I'm reading this out here uh, verbatim. These are the claims based on a study conducted in 1999 to 2000 comparing micronutrient enriched beverages versus non-fortified placebo. What does non-fortified placebo mean? Non-fortified placebo basically means that there are no vitamins or minerals that are artificially added to this. And the placebo could be just milk, but I highly doubt that it is, or it could be water. We don't know because it just says non-fortified placebo. However, this can be interchanged with anything. It doesn't have to be Horlicks. It can be Boost. It can be Milo. It can be Bonvita. Um, so it's not necessarily just this brand, one. And two, anything is going to be proven uh, to um, give you stronger, um, make you stronger, taller, sharper, if it's compared with non-fortified placebo, which could essentially be just water. Take a look at um, the ingredients over here. This is not too bad. So malt is a process, malting is a process which is controlled germination of a cereal grain. And what occurs over here is that um, the germination uh, happens under a specific temperature uh, and to a specific extent, which allows the enzymatic activity to break down the starch as well as the proteins in the cereal grain. And this allows the starch and the proteins, which are broken down by the enzymes right now because of germination, to be more bioavailable and more easily available to um, digest. Um, so it's, not, it's uh, the nutrition that will also be absorbed better, but it also digests better and you take, take up less energy digesting it. This is malted barley, 39%, and then there's 25% atta. So in 100 grams of, in 10 grams of your um, powder, two and a half grams is atta. 14% milk solids, sugar, again, wheat protein, which is wheat gluten, and then you have your minerals, emulsifier, and vitamins. Uh, so soy protein isolate as well, but that is so tiny because I know how much emulsifier actually goes into this. And the soy protein isolate is actually lesser than the salt in this. Ingredients are listed in um, descending order, which means that the largest is first. So the largest first ingredient here in the children's horlicks is malted barley. The second largest is wheat flour. The third one is milk powder. The fourth one is sugar. And sugar, you don't get a percentage over here. But what you can do is you can actually go back to the per 100 grams um, nutrition table over here and you 
scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, and you can see it in really tiny font over here. It's of which sugar, sucrose, um, which is a disaccharide made up of glucose and fructose, is 13.5 grams, which means it is 13.5%. So it was okay to say milk solids are 14%, but uh, you know, sugar is 13.5%. They don't want to mention that in the ingredient list. It's not great. Um, 200 ml of milk, three heaped teaspoons, and then you mix, and that's how you get a milk supplemented or fortified milk in this case. What we do not get to see over here, sorry, what we do not get to see over here is the nutritional information with milk or without milk. We don't know whether this nutritional information that is there is with milk or without milk. This is the nutritional information for milk, so you can take a look. It does require a little bit of math, and uh, I'm not going to lie. It is very confusing, and it's just a lot easier to believe that no added sugar, calcium, the bone nutrition specialist over here, which you'll see in the next one. You can see it over here. It's just much easier to look at the advertising panel because it just takes up so much more real estate and it gives you all these claims and we're, we tend to believe them rather than not. I mean, like the key to actually reading food labels is to be suspicious of everything that's on the principal display panel. Like over here, you can see this little asterisk over here or this hashtag over here. You can see this little uh, superscript one over here. Uh, you can see this little arrow over here, 100% RDA of calcium. Just to give you um, some perspective over here, 100% RDA of calcium can also be achieved by powdering half an eggshell and consuming it with a little bit of acid like lime juice or tamarind juice. That will give you 100% RDA of calcium for your, uh, so RDA is required daily allowance. 100% um, RDA of vitamin D over here. And then 100% of RDA of vitamin K2. Now, vitamin D, there are not very many dietary sources. We primarily get our vitamin D from sunlight and UVB sunlight, uh, which is recommended. You, you get about 10 to 30 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, of midday sunlight. And that will be enough uh, vitamin D uh, for your body for that day. Um, Vitamin K2 is something that is found very easily in a lot of greens and is not necessarily um, lacking in most people. Uh, vitamin K2 does actually help in bone absorption, uh, bone development and bone health by helping uh, vitamin D help absorb the calcium better. What is the role of calcium over here? The calcium helps build your bones and helps keep your calcium channels um, ready and working within your skeletal muscle. But vitamin D allows for the absorption of vitamin, of calcium from your gut. Otherwise, it takes it from the bones to actually maintain the calcium channels that are required for your skeletal muscle to work properly. So these are the claims that you have on your principal display panel. Here we go. <clears throat> After the age of 30, bone mineral density may start to decrease. True, why? Because you don't get enough vitamin D, which will then not allow the calcium that you are eating to be absorbed by the body. So it's vital for you to go out into the sun and get your vitamin D. So what happens if you don't get enough vitamin D, you can go out and because you don't go outside, it starts taking it away from the bones. Calcium for strong bones, is in an asterisk over here. And let me just find that over here. So I'm not sure if you can see this over here, but you know, um, it, this is really fine and my eyesight is fine. I just, it makes it, they make it very, very difficult for you to actually find all the claims that are available and, um, it's just like, it's very, very difficult. And I've seen this multiple times. It's just very difficult for me to find it as well. So 
so it can, provides 100% of it contains, and then you can see this little dollar sign over here. Now this dollar sign I've actually, um, contains calcium as much as in half a liter of milk, but they don't, I mean, like you, you might think that this is per serving, but it's actually for a hundred grams of product. And if it's for a hundred grams of product, take a look. They're asking you to do twice a day, and that's 30 grams of product over there. And uh, you're, they're also including the nutrition of the milk, um, which is not, which is not, um, disclosed over here on the packaging. But then this claim, it's just there, it's very easy to pick and choose the numbers as they see fit. It's not necessarily that it's for 30 grams serving or if it's for a 250 ml serving or if it's for 100 ml of milk. Um, you do need to definitely be suspicious of these little guys over here and you definitely need to do some amount of math to see what kind of nutrition you're actually getting. Now let's go to the ingredients over here. This malt extract, again, 47%. Milk solids, and then there's hydrolyzed corn solids. Now, hydrolyzed corn solids are basically made from concentrating corn syrup and then hydrolyzed with enzymes. They're essentially sugar in that sense. Um, and that is how they get away with saying that is how they get away with saying no added sugar because they're replacing it with hydrolyzed corn solids which is made with concentrated corn syrup to less than 10 percent of water and then hydrolyzed with food grade acids or enzymes they're used as a sweetener in a dry baby formulas powdered coffee creamers and powdered drink mixes, and the regulations don't uh, make them say that, you know, this is just as bad as sugar, or this is um, just as effective as sugar in providing glucose um, to you. Let's go, let's go on to a particular topic of interest to me which is primarily this. Now this is used for elderly people. And um, this, is a particular, this is of particular interest to me because um, my father was um, diagnosed with late stage uh, prostate cancer, which metastasized to his um, stomach and his lymph nodes and his bones. Uh, and he went through intensive chemotherapy and then intensive radiation therapy. And then they just said, oh yeah, just, you know, um, there was no nutrition chart given. There was no diet chart given. They just said avoid sugar, um, avoid carbohydrates, and they said, okay, you can you can maybe have insure. Uh, and when I took a look at the label, I was um, quite surprised that they would recommend something like that. But then I realized that doctors are human as well, and it's not their job to um, prescribe the diet chart or the nutrition chart for us, and they to just see the principal display panel versus the actual nutritional facts and the ingredients. Let's go. There's the strength with the little asterisk over here. Let's go discover what that is, if we can find it. Ensure has complete balanced nutrition with 32 nutrients like high protein, calcium, vitamin D, and iron. Provides 100% and RDA or vitamin A, E. This is also something that is easily replaced with a multivitamin or with um, a really well-balanced salad, but you do need to know what contains what, which um, a lot of people do. I mean, you, um, we do learn it in school. We do learn it in college to some extent with regards to vitamins and minerals and what foods contain them and what foods don't. Here we go. All claims, you can see the little dollar sign over here take water or milk. And these are the claims um, over here. And this is vital nutrients to support strength, immunity, and energy. If you can look here, it says all claims are applicable to mixing six scoops of Ensure with water. 150 ml, 190 ml, six scoops. 
is required and it's not intended to be used as a sole source of nutrition. Here are the ingredients. Skimmed milk powder, which is basically spray dried milk without the fat. Maltodextrin, sucrose, sugar, edible vegetable oil, FOS or facto oligosaccharides, minerals, vitamins. Minerals and vitamins are available one pill. They'll basically cover your RDA for the day. Maltodextrin is a polysaccharide and that's used as a food additive. It is produced from vegetable starch, again, like cornstarch, and it has a higher glycemic index than sugar. How do they, how do they manage to um, uh, slow down that absorption is by adding fructo oligosaccharide. So this is essentially milk powder, um, sweetener again, and then sugar on top of it, and then you have sunflower oil. It's just easier to give them uh, a ragi malt or a, a, a wheat malt or just badam powder with a little bit of milk. This has so much sugar in it. And my father was advised to not take any sugar and to reduce his carbohydrate intake and to make sure that he had non-refined carbohydrates. If you take a look at the per 100 grams over here, you can see sugar, sucrose, because maltodextrin isn't considered sugar again, um, is 14.7% of the total uh, package over here with regards to the powder. What I'm trying to get at is that there will be professionals that will recommend things just on the basis of the PDP, which is the principal display panel. But whenever you see a symbol over here, they have to have to by law back up the claims that they are speaking of. And that is when you can trace it back to the kind of claims that they're making. And that is when you can trace it back to the study that's been done with regards to a comparison with a fortified beverage versus a non-fortified placebo, which could just be water. I mean, you will have to dive deeper into it, but take the time to do it if it's something that you're going to be using on a regular basis. These are just um, some breakdowns of, uh, you know, the hydrolyzed cornstarch, um, maltitol, again, uh, sugar alcohol, uh, by law, it is used as a sweetener, by, but by regulatory law, it doesn't need to be uh, labeled as an added sugar. However, you can take a look at what it comprises of. You have the carbohydrate. It's a, 100 grams of maltitol is 100 grams of carbohydrate. The only thing that is that it's actually 210 calories versus um, regular carbohydrate, which is about uh, four, 400 calories for every 100 grams or four calories per gram. Um, maltitol is also, uh, watch out for it because it also has, it also um, basically broke, breaks down into glucose and uh, has higher fiber, but that also has laxative effects because it draws water from the walls of your large intestine and can cause some amount of di dehydration. What are the alternatives? Now, I'm not recommending this brand over here. I just, this was the first one that came out that actually had um, some information about it. Uh, but uh, try and find co-ops. We now are understanding and realizing that, you know, nutritionally dense foods are available locally and there is some wisdom behind it. I mean, um, when our parents were making baby food, they were, um, they were, germinating, they were roasting, they were grinding to a fine powder, and they were adding it into milk. If milk is your choice of um, beverage, and if you want to fortify it, try and find co-ops, try and find local people, try and find local, try and find local manufacturers um, that actually do something like this. For example, in Bangalore, Navdarshanam is an incredible co-op. And you can see the ingredients right here. It's sprouted, ragi, wheat, green gram, and badam. That's it. Four ingredients. There's no emulsifier, there's no soy protein isolate, there's no artificial flavors. You can, and you can control the kind of sugar that you want in this. 
Um, I use this when uh, I mix it with um, cocoa and one teaspoon of sugar, which is approximately about five grams. And this makes about a 250 ml glass of um, milk, fortified milk. And this is perfect for me. It, uh, it gives me what I require on a nutri nutritional basis. And if I have, if I'm lacking something or if there's not enough sunlight for me to go out and get, I take a multivitamin tablet. Multivitamin tablets, uh, this, this is 60 tablets for about 295 rupees, approximately 300 rupees. It's five rupees a tablet. One kg of Ensure is 1,058 rupees. You're going to have to do the math and really try and understand whether a little bit of skimmed milk powder, some atta, and some amount of germinated cereal grain is worth, with five rupees worth of, five or 10 rupees worth of uh, uh, multivitamin tablets is worth 1,058 rupees. And it, can you, I know it's convenient, but can you actually find an alternative that is better for yourself, for your children, and for your elderly? Uh, these are some of the references I've used. Um, the FSSAI uh, website is actually quite comprehensive, and they are constantly taking in feedback and getting better. So if you do want to make a change, uh, from a regulatory perspective, take a look, pay attention to the labels, and then write into the FSSAI, and they will actually go ahead and see what it's about, and if it's not according to regulations, then they will find the company. Um, the rest of these are articles with regards to um, hydrolyzed corn syrup or hydrolyzed corn solids, uh, maltitol, maltodextrin, and um, with regards to vitamin K2, um, vitamin D and their uses and their um, uh, sources, etc. So I'm happy to take questions or if you guys have uh, food packages that you would like to discuss, um, I'd, I'd love to be able to learn with you.